So, I was asked uh, a nice question on uh, so something along the lines of why, why in The Course of Miracles it sometimes says, Dear God, and yet maybe it's referenced somewhere else in the Course that God doesn't really care or, no, or know us, know. doesn't know us, yeah. So, um, I really like the, the work, you know, one of, one of A Course of Miracles teacher was Dr. David R. Hawkins, and he did, he was able to get, uh, to calibrate using muscle testing what the different the different vibratory spiritual fields and so when you're when you're strongly identified with the ego you're you're resonating as the course would say in a place of strong fear and separation so the experiencing is of extreme fear and separation or this kind of separation anxiety mm -hmm. or if you are following a, a non-dual path it would be a very dualistic experiencing of life so as you start to do the spiritual work, forgiveness and stuff, and letting things go and praying and doing the course lessons or doing whatever spiritual tools, this, um, so in the beginning, uh, the experiencing is, uh, uh, the experience of the individual who starts the course, because you wouldn't start the course, you'd only start the course if you needed to do the course, you wouldn't do the course, because the last lesson in the course is you don't need to do the course any longer because you could say you've arrived at the place where the Course is wanting to take you after 365 lessons, which is the experiencing of, shall we say, a place that is timeless, formless, um, and limitless. So, so in the beginning, if, you're, if I'm identified with my thoughts and my body, which I think the Course would agree, are the main things that create this feeling of body and mind, and create a sense of separation in the world, that I'm separate from other individuals. And so, I, as I experience separation, then I project that others are also in this world of separation along with me. So then, you know, the, the notions then, when it was starting off with the course, are go, going to be very dualistic. So I'm going to experience that the me, that sitting here, which is identified with the body and thoughts, is real. You know, and therefore God, or the Holy Spirit, uh, who's the sort of the intermediary, um, then is something external to me. So me here pray to Holy Spirit or to God for a uh, thing. So it's very dualistic. And also when I'm very identified with my body and thoughts, i.e. I'd be strongly identified with the ego, then my, my experiencing is going to be full of fear. Or, or vulnerability, or separation, or distress, or, or I might be in, ad, uh, in addictions like food addiction or whatever, just to get a temporary relief. But you know, when I'm doing the, the Course in Miracles, it's saying like, you know, God is the love in which I forgive. You know, if I'm angry at my mother, God is the love in which I forgive my mother. Or, um, uh, but so, so it's like I'm praying, and then I'm praying to God, or I'm praying to the Holy Spirit. There's a very sort of a separated type of thing. It's like there's a me and there's a separate Holy Spirit or there's a separate God. But also for me as well, as you start to do the course, you're, my, <clears throat> as I start to let go of my stuff, my experiencing of the world changes as my vibration increases. So I start to feel, in the beginning, I might have ideas of the world, if I'm very strongly tuned to fear, that I'm in a fearful world. And then I start projecting that people are fear, I'm afraid of people. And I also could project, which is a very common thing within the collective consciousness, that God is punishing or that there's a judgmental God. So I go, you know, God, you know, help me, I've got a problem here. But I'm relating to God like a punishing father, which is the anthropomorphic projection. And God's probably like my father and probably if I do well, I, I, you know, he's, He's happy, and if I do if I make a mistake, I'll get punished. So I really think that the languaging that one uses eventually is really important in how one eventually. And I think you know the, the question of like why dear you know why de, uh, dear uh, oh yes the thing of dear God is like when I say dear God it's like well it's someone dear is like invoking some some love uh, with God. So I think that's going to be useful in invoking a loving God's intervention or a loving Holy Spirit. But in terms of like the idea, my view on the thing of like God doesn't, um, doesn't care or doesn't relate or isn't really aware of us, something like that, well that's, 
uh, when you start to do a lot of spiritual work and you start to get into what I call these uh, non-dual places, i.e., you know, as I started to do my spiritual work, I started, uh, what is it, like, I don't know, 17 years ago, 18 years ago, uh, and getting into spiritual work. Um, and then doing the Course in Miracles, meeting enlightened teachers like Dr. David R. Hawkins and Muji and uh, uh, Dr. Hawkins, he was also a Course in Miracles teacher and had so many miracles in applying the Course. Uh, I started to get these mystical experiences and once I had a white light spiritual experience, you start to get into these experiences, these mystical experiences of flow and timelessness where you, you no longer experience yourself in separation. You start to experience what the Course would call one, oneness whereas you're no longer identified with your personal body and your thoughts, and so you get these feelings of like a complete oneness. as the, Because you recognize that when you start making things meaningless, as the Course says, like, all my thoughts are meaningless, you stop identifying with the field of thinking as yourself. And I'm not a body, I'm free, for I am as God created me. So that for me is a really fundamental lesson, which is repeated over and over again, because I believe the or shall we say the Holy Spirit knows that what two of the major addictions are ident identifying with thinking, thoughts, and identification with the body, which then create this, uh, I think the Course would call this illusory, to answering your question, the illusion of separation being real, reality. Even though everyone, it's a dualistic world and everyone experiences separation who are not, um, have not yet released that idea, it would be called the illusory world. But in truth, this world for me is an illusion. And I'll, I'll sort of say that, and once you start to experience the fields of oneness, and even I've had white, uh, white light spiritual experience where this world does not even exist. So you then real, one then realizes that experiencing of the world is related to how much identification there is within the field of the ego as to what you experience. So when I met a uh, teacher of enlightenment, Muji, I went from a place of extreme fear and separation and horrific pain, gout, in my foot, and then it was asked, like, what's observing the thoughts, what's, you know, what's observing the body, and then suddenly it was like in a field of <coughs> infinite light, love and power beyond description, and the world didn't even exist, <coughs> it was like being in the middle of the sun, being in the middle of the sun would be like, well, you couldn't think, there couldn't be any darkness, there couldn't be any contrast, there couldn't be any this or that could exist there, because the intensity of the light and the love and the power is on such a magnitude that no contrast would be even possible to exist. So <clears throat> for me then, you know, if um, um, I sort of see that, I think, you know, like in the Bible it says in the beginning there was light, wasn't there? And out of the light came. And so like to be in the fields of God consciousness would be like to be an infinite light, an infinite power of such a magnitude that actually the experiencing of people in separation and their suffering wouldn't exist at that plane. And as you start to identify with thoughts, and as, a, as thoughts were identified, then you go into fields of bliss and ecstasy and oneness. And then as you identify more with thoughts and then with the body, you start to come down, you start to experience separation and then eventually fear and time. So, so uh, on a certain level, I think, you know, um, you know, God in the infinite, infinite God, does not experience what's going on here. But this is like a dream. You could say it's a manifested dream of God, I think, is a nice way. Because it's like, how do I experience, this is what I, I realized with my spiritual work, how do I experience separation? Well, I have to have objects or thoughts or bodies or symbolic things which have to be meaningful. And as you start to grab onto thoughts and bodies, or as donuts or chocolates become meaningful, then this, this experiencing of the world and separation starts to exist. You go off from the non-dual timeless oneness places to that. And as you're starting to track, and then you start to get more of the visceral feeling of fear and separation. Um, in the world. So it's just like little steps up. So if anyone went off and had a, had a, a white light spiritual experience, uh, there is no capacity to relate to this world in those fields because the power and the light and the love is indescribable. And it's like, I think, you know, like you, you sort of say, like I remember Hawkins saying, like you've got God, God is at infinity. 
like what would it be like to experience infinite love, infinite power? Um, can a duality exist? It's and if you had experienced it, it would be impossible. Because it's like in the middle of the sun, can, can a shadow exist in the middle of the sun? If you're in the middle of the sun, if the sun was able to speak, can a shadow exist in the middle of the sun? It would, it would be like ridiculous. It just cannot exist. Then you've got, maybe like you might have the archangels, which might be that, and then might be at the sun, and then you've got the angels. And then, so, and then, you know, I think the, with the Course of Miracles, the Holy Spirit is like a little sort of um, interpreter. You know, so you need something stepped down to be able to communicate, you know, or if I've got like uh, guides or whatever, or the angels, you know, they can, I can have a direct communication with them because they're, they're, they're down a bit. But can you, can you ask infinity to verbalize something or be aware of something? It's just, mm -hmm. it's just it's on a different plane. So that would be how I'd interpret that. But I think that was a great question. Thank you.